Okay. The board welcomes comments but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff members or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or to the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or, on, or of the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked until you are asked to by me, the chair. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. I will now open it up to public comment. Yeah. Shall I just come up here? Please, <laughs> stand. Okay. Yes. So my name's Nancy Hutchinson, and to give you a little bit of background, I um, taught at RTCC. I retired um, as the education training um, instructor in 2021. Um, so uh, tech ed's always been very special to me, um, and I continue to support the programs even though I'm no longer teaching there. But even before I started teaching there, I get the Friday night dinners and. Um, and then since I left, they've started this, um, in December, this craft fair, and I think it's a wonderful idea, so I always come and support every program if I can. So I just wanted you to know how special Tech Ed is to me. Um, so I was about two years into retirement, and I got asked to serve on this bo uh, board for a startup child care center. So I thought, well, I was kind of enjoying retirement, but I thought, oh, I could do that. I think I'd have something meaningful to, to offer. So. Um, with my background in tech ed and the education program, we built into our budget, um, we were going to rely on um, education students to, uh, to round out our staff. So um, a, a student under the age of 18 can work for us and be paid and count as in the ratio if they're part of a, of a tech ed program. So we can't come to RUHS and say to NASA or whoever, we want to hire somebody to um, work from three to five um, because they're not part of the program. So mm -hmm. the only way that we can hire somebody under age 18 is if they're part of the education program at RTCC. So I was really disappointed when I found out that she had like one student and so we had to go to plan B. We had to change our plans. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we've survived, we're open, and we're fully staffed, and all is going well. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I, so I, I know, I understand, and I know that there's um, low enrollment, and the program is, um, will be talked about eliminating for next year. However, I, so I just want you to know that there's a huge increase in demand for child care. So, Randolph, before we opened, had um, Robin's Nest, which is a private child care center, and there was n nothing else. Randolph Community Preschool closed um, at the end of July. So we opened in October, and we are serving um, eight infants and 10 toddlers. Um, so we hire five full-time staff, and we'll eventually be hiring another part-time. So that's five new jobs. Well, actually, RCP had two and a half. So uh, we lost those jobs, picked up five and a half from us, so that's a net gain of three, three jobs. But, as Anne can, <laughs> can attest to, Orange County Parent Child Center has been working for quite a few years to open a child care center on Route 66. They are going to start out by opening their three to five year old program and they're going to have 28 kids, so I'm guessing they need at least full time employees. So now that brings that up to eight. And when they're fully fully um, staffed, they're going to have 88 kids, right? Mm -hmm. 88 children, and that's 17 childcare providers that they're going to have to provide. So now we're up to um, 22 and a half jobs in this area for childcare that were not here before. So it concerns me that you know, we aren't gonna have a feeder program anymore to help build the workforce. So I actually met with Ruth, Ruth Durkee yesterday, um, and I, I have an in because she used to work here, so I knew who she was, and I sent her an email, and she um, agreed to, we had a telephone conversation yesterday. So there's sev I learned several things about the education training program. Um, 
There are two programs in Vermont, Wyndham, is that right? Wyndham something down yeah. in Brattleboro, yeah. and Riverbend. They had struggling enrollment, and they have revamped their program, and now they are successful. So I don't know what they did. I don't know if you're interested in exploring that, but um, that's an option. I also know that we received a substantial grant from Building Bright Futures, and I know that Hartford Tech Center, uh, I believe last December, so we got rejected the first time. We got one the, the second time, but Hartford Tech Center got a grant from Building Bright Futures, and it was up to 80000 so it might have been $80,000 to revamp their curriculum to build the early childhood um, workforce. So those are three examples of you know a direction that you can do. Ruth also told me that you can put the program on hold. So that would mean the teacher would go away and then you could have a year to rebuild a program, kind of reinvent it, so that um, in 20, what would that be? 26. 2026, you could start a whole new program I don't know if you have to hire the instructor back or not, but um, anyhow, you could kind of reinvent, have a year to reinvent it. So I just wanted you to know these things. I want you to know that there's going to be an even bigger demand for childcare in the near future. I think they plan to open in September of 2025. Not full time, but they're going to work into that. So 17 employees, and I think um, the executive director, I've talked with her a few times, I think she's a little anxious about where are we going to get these. The, st the staff. So that's all I have to say. Um, anybody have any questions? Nika has my email. Anne has my email. Please reach out. I don't have time to do boots on the ground work, but I'm happy to, you know, point you in directions or you know support however I can um, if you're interested. Well, that's a great segue for something I was going to bring up tonight. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> my wife is Carrie Wright, who is the director oh, of the Robins. Oh, I know Nest. Carrie. <laughs> And there is a big concern on top of that. Any homeowner right now is getting extra charges on their fuel to help cover the cost of kids going to daycare or preschool while the parents go back to work. So the need for childcare is gonna even be more so because we're all getting charged that on our fuel costs. Um, there's an extra charge now. Um, my concern is the state of Vermont regulates that a college education to be a teacher for the preschool is required. Does that sound? Familiar? So actually, well, to or, be a, like in um, in the RES preschool or any any program that career. yeah any program that accepts state money for a preschool. I think I'm correct in saying this. Mm -hmm. They have to have a bachelor's degree, right. but not. So we have a lead teacher. Um, she's the lead teacher in our toddler room. She has a CDA, so that's a child development associate. Okay. It's uh, it's rigorous. I ha actually piloted it, that program the last year I was here, and I had three students in just that portion. I had more students, but only three of them participated. Nika, and I, um, I don't want to cut you off, but I know we've got a hard stop. Oh, at yes. Second. Okay. We've well over so we minutes. could. Yes, yes we, we, we can talk. talk. Yeah. Okay. But that, you know, and just because it's on the on the yeah, on the thing about canceling that that course, I'd really highly recommend that we don't, and that we try to either reformat that, advertise it, promote to get kids in there, because there is going to be a serious need starting very shortly. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me come. Okay. So there is. A second piece that's coming around, thank you. Um, and the first item on our agenda tonight is an update on <coughs> the improvement plan that we have for the Agency of Education to increase industry recognized credentials. So last year our students did not receive industry recognized credentials, though they did receive college credit um, in some classes. And so what we've done as part of our um, improvement plan is ensure that the industry recognized credentials are being offered to students in all programs, um, with the exception of uh, one program, which is education services, because they offer um, college courses in lieu of the IRCs. So I just wanted to go through and show you what we are going to be offering this year. So it's pretty exciting stuff. So 
This year in design engineering, formerly manufacturing and fabrication, they are going to be getting a certified SolidWorks associate and the gas tungsten, tungsten arc welding plate IRC. Um, education services, students, uh, there is one part-time student in there and they are doing the college and career readiness um, CCD course. Electrical technology is going to get the NCCER core as well as the intro to college and career readiness and that is being taught by our education services teacher in conjunction with our electrical teacher. And they're also going to get the electrical apprenticeship year one exam. Criminal justice is ordering FAA, is, is receiving um, IRC for FAA Part 107 drone certification and they're doing the three credit college course um, intro to criminal justice through CCD. Diversified agriculture is offering game of logging 1.4 and the bless you in the ICEV IRC. Dental assisting is combining with our LNA program and they're going to be offering human biology. Health Careers is offering the LNA and Human Biology. Digital Media Arts, aka uh, Film, as we called it last year. Um, Digital Media Arts will be doing Adobe Certified Professional Premiere Pro and the Vermont Arts Portfolio. And so there is the um, Digital Film, um, Film and Digital Media and Multimedia Portfolio. So that's what they are going to be doing. They're also doing the college course intro to digital media through CCD. Diesel technology is going to be getting the ASE medium and heavy duty diesel entry level engines, steering brake suspension, um, and powertrain preventive maintenance and inspection services and possibly a forklift certification. We're not sure that's that's a big that's a lot. Um, so they're, they're working on a lot of things in there. But they're getting they're going above and beyond. Construction trades is going to get the NCC core which includes general carpentry, floor, wall, and roof systems. Automotive is getting the Vermont State Inspection IRC and all seven of the ASC tests. And culinary Arts will be SurfSafe Manager and Pro Start Skills USA. So I'm really proud of that um, and we're actively working on all of that and it's very exciting to have it here and laid out for us so that we know what we are able to offer our students. On the FAA drone sir are they going to go up to Burlington and take the test before they graduate they will pass they will get their certification this year I don't know that they're going to Burlington for it I'm not but sure they'll take the going. FAA test where they're in a room by themselves and yeah okay. yeah they'll get the certification cool. yes yes um, okay so that is that our next piece is um, as Nancy had alluded to so um, I am bringing forth to the RAB uh, a recommendation for closure of two programs at the end of this school year um, due to consistent low enrollment in both of those programs. Um, Education Services currently has one student enrolled um, as a half, one half day student. And so he's taking the introduction to college and career readiness and he's doing um, he's an education student because he has done film twice in a row and on the third year he wanted to learn about um, or we kind of put a process together for him to learn about being a teaching assistant in the digital film class of digital media arts and so that is what he's doing and so to help support that, he is a very part-time student in the Education Services Program. And Dental Assisting um, currently has one full-time student and one of the same type of student as Education Services. So a student who is on co-op and comes into class for one half day per week. So the .5 represents a student who comes in one half day per week, but they're on co-op. So. Our well, enrollment is very low. What were the numbers the last three years for each one? Do you know enrollment numbers? Um, Dental had five students last year. Last year, I don't know the year before that. Two of them were on co-op though. Yes. So three full time and two on co-op last year. So, so yes. three and a half, three point five. And then education last year, I want to say they had five. I'm nearly positive they had five. <coughs> 
and maybe co-op out of those. Oh, yes, yeah. all of I think them. I think four, four. Maybe they all did co-op. I think at some point everybody did co-op, but it started at four and went yeah. to five. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And then the year before dental, right? What was the, it? Was its first year first running? First year. And so, what was it three? Maybe. I don't know. I really don't know. I you weren't here. here. I wasn't here. Um, I, I. I'm going to say three, okay. and that would have been none on co-op because typically first year you don't go. It's typically second year you go on co-op. And education services was very small the year before as well. Um, the state does keep track of all of these numbers, and it's with their approval that we are considering these moves. I'm curious if, because I just heard on BPR also, that the state is looking for, they said, there's going to be about 10,000 early childhood ed physicians available in the state of Vermont, I'm curious that the state is not saying, because isn't that part of the purpose of a tech center is to, is mm, to oh provide yeah. workforce, especially yes. workforce that yes. doesn't necessarily require. It's one of the main points, but you have to have students that want to do the work because we have the need, but we don't currently have students that are interested in going into that as a career. How could you revamp yeah, the education services so they're one step, one step closer <laughs> to getting their college degree to be a teacher, for example? Actually, they, they're really close to getting a college degree if they take that class because of the amount of credits that the teacher gave last year, and then she would again this year if she had more students. She was the top of all of the programs at RTCC, <coughs> she gave the most college credits. They have nine, I think some even got 12 college credits. <coughs> I mean, she really pushed the college classes and they did really well. I think it's, um, I don't know, it's just an opinion, but I think that it is not seen as a very high paying profession. And I think that that's- That's gonna change A though. big thing, that, yeah. That's the that's education in the process that needs of to get changing. out because the reason we're getting extra fees on our fuel is so the state will compensate so teachers and assistants and people in that profession get paid a livable wage. Do you know what it's going <coughs> to? I don't. Uh, I can, I'm on, so I, I'm, I'm speaking from two hats, so I am on the Orange County Parent Child Center board mm. and um, I wish I had the pay scale right in front of me, but I know we have as a board and as an organization have worked really hard at, at increasing the pay mm -hmm. and I and part of that is because all of the, the care centers around because of the changing in state legislation for child care and early childhood education it's there's been a big push for state subsidy and making that a livable wage for people. And so, uh, anyway. Well, and this all trickles downhill <laughs> because once you have your degree, it's really easy to get your teaching degree with a few more mm -hmm. classes and you get 26 days off, summers off, so you're right. losing a lot to that as well. And there's a demand for teachers in the state at Definitely. the high school and elementary school level as well. So it's a, it's a real battle uphill. Um, I will tell you that you could reach out to Gifford. I don't know if they'll share that information with you. Um, Robin's Nest has been an ongoing uh, preschool for many years. I don't know if they've had to do any adjustment of pay or if they've done studies for the state, um, but there's gotta be information out there of like what an average teacher makes, an assistant makes, cooks make. Um, I'm just thinking of the staff that my wife has in the facility, um, directors, all that kind of thing. Um, I really and I agree like I can see the dental assisting which is kind of sad because there is dental assistants that are needed yes. um, and a lot of them are older and they're getting ready to retire um, I guess my next question would be what steps are you going to take next to inform students of the career possibilities do we need to find out what an average pay is a year 
if they're getting most of the credits for a degree, that's less educational money they have to take out after high school and a college loan, and how much savings that is from having to pay that back every month. Actually, right now at CCV, it's free to get an early childhood education associate's degree. I mean, that's how bad the is. That's how is. desperate the state is for these workers. And so well, that's where I'm like, wait a minute, why are we? And maybe it is a matter of pausing and taking a look and mm -hmm seeing how we might change the program, how we might recruit differently. And I will put on my third hat that I've retired from, and that was a BZAC outreach counselor. And I can tell you, I feel kind of bad, but for several years, I worked with first generation, college bound and limited resource students. And I told them, do not go into early childhood education because it doesn't pay. But then all of a sudden the state turns around awesome. and all of this support comes in. And so there's a lot of re-education that needs to take place in terms of early childhood education. And I don't know about your experience, but I know from our former superintendent, if you have good quality early childhood education, students are better prepared oh, definitely. to be in schools. Yes. Definitely. So, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it you, seems, my, I agree with that. It, it seems we need to. Yeah, my kids came out of Robin's Nest, obviously, because my wife worked there, and they were more prepared for kindergarten. And that's just not being biased. That's everybody that's come out of it. So, I think, so, for sure, so as an educator here, I am not excited to be sitting here saying, that the education program is not sustainable as it is, right? I, I, you know, we're starting on the preliminary budget. We'll be sharing a budget with the OSSD board. Uh, preliminarily, we're at a we're at a space where we're level, where we're level servicing, with the exception of these two programs, uh, and we're looking at upwards of a 10% increase to what the tuition rate that White River, White River Valley pays, what yeah. Randolph Union pays, what uh, you know, Central, Central Vermont pays. And that, that number is, well, it's going up 10% this year. If our enrollment stays at the level that it is, Right now, today's tuition is $23,510 per student. How many people are enrolled right now in RGCC? 100, I would say, the number I'd use is 108, but Nika, you yeah, want Yeah, no, I think that's about right. It's in flux, like, we got, we got a that student a couple of days ago. Well, I, I think something, there's a couple things that are interesting here, right? So I'm brand new, right. no, no experience about what's going on and gotcha. how, how it got there, but I can tell you that the in my time here, because I that's one of the things I looked at was saying, hey, enrollment's gone from you know around about 150 down to the 120s, and now it's creeping into the hundred and the 110. And when you look at what's going on, you look at the high school. Uh, enrollment here at Randolph. I've had people tell me that it has been as high as 700 here. I can't imagine what this building looks like with 700 students in it, but Bull. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you believe 700. Yeah. Now, now today we're at about 325 and that includes seventh and eighth graders, right? right? Uh, I don't know what the, what the White River Valley High School is, but I know that you guys closed the Right, Whit Whitcomb was in your in right. your well, that's the reason we consolidated is because yeah. uh, Whitcomb basically didn't have any students. Yeah, so, you know, we were getting really low. Yeah, Chelsea and so was well. yes. yeah. yeah, so you know that you so, know that the Chelsea High School, which used to send students to RTCC, closed. <coughs> uh, Rochester closed, and Whitcomb closed. My understanding, talking with uh, Jamie, superintendent for that district, is some of those students now go to other schools that are outside of the uh, RTCC catchment area, They're in the Hartford catch, catchment area. Uh, so that's another reason that we're looking at that. And, and the overall population uh, is declining. And same, same thing happening in 
Northfield and Williamstown. Both of those both of those high schools are also operating <coughs> similar with loss of, well, I think of that's numbers. Economy, so. right? I mean, not to get political, but the state's very expensive. Yeah, I, I'm not getting political. And, no, I'm, I'm not getting saying, political at all. Right. All I'm saying is is that we used to run at about a hundred and we used to run at about 150 students, yep. and the surrounding high schools are dropping by 50 percent population. And we are not dropping by 50%. We are well above 50% of our population. So the interest in attending the technical centers remains strong. The amount of students that we have access to is much less than, than what it was. And so part of what we're doing here, and you all can make whatever recommendation you want to make, we're going to be before the OSSD board in a week saying, Here's what the here's what the potential tuition change is going to be, and because tuition operates at a tech center on a six uh, six semester rolling average, what's holding us up right now, what's keeping that to a ten percent increase, is the fact that we have two even so last year our population was down some the year before it was really strong. Those years are pulling our average up which allows us to charge less for a tuition. We're going to head as a regional technical center into a spot where that 108 number is going to be bringing our numbers down. So we have to be, we, I, do think, I do think as a board, you have to be thoughtful and say, okay, I agree with you. We've got to figure out where there's interest in programs. We also need to work on generating interest in programs. However, our technical center right now has a number of programs that are between five and eight students. We need to get those classes up over eight, and we need to focus our energy, in my opinion, on those so that we keep the Perkins funding that comes to our program. And uh, then once we get that stabilized and get the interest regenerated, then I think what we do is we look at getting the, the the dental assisting and the education program up and going. But if we take our energy right now and try to spend it through all of those programs, trying to get all of those programs up to the over eight number so that they're eligible for Perkins funding, uh, I'm concerned that we will be spreading our energy too thin and, and we will lose more programs in the long run. That would be my opinion. So what are you doing to educate kids? So the tech center goes out and talks with kids mm -hmm. in their sending schools. They go out and they educate kids about the programs. Part of a tech center teacher's role, and keep in mind, I, again, I'm, I'm new, so, but I'm gonna jump right in here. They go out to the, those schools and they talk about why their program is important and what you can do with the learning that comes from your program. These IRCs that Nika just talked to you about, yeah. they may sound not exciting, although I like the interest that you had in the drone I piece, license, right? So that's why I was asking. I know the test. It's yeah. Okay. So the reality of it is these IRCs and these college credits are out there designed to help encourage. I'll point out, as Ann, as Ann shared with you, it's definitely an uphill. It's definitely an uphill struggle for a program like education because, as Ann said, and I can go. I can. Kids that are that could go to that program in our school can also go directly to CCV, have their full tuition paid for, and come out with an associate's degree. Right. So that we're competing against things that are that are hard to compete against. And so again, what we're looking at in Vermont, Nathan, is, again, I think, we're spreading out the avenues to get this, and it's making other programs not as viable. Perhaps if we weren't doing that, if we focused in in Vermont and said, this is the route that we're gonna go. If we had a vision for education in Vermont, we might be in a spot where we could say, here would be a really great way for us to educate the future educators of Vermont. Uh, so I, I totally get where you're coming from. Let me ask you a question. Is every student required to go listen to them? Or is it, if you're interested, come talk to us? I don't think they're different. required. I, I, don't. So that, I, I can answer is, that question. Okay. Are they required <laughs> or are they Yes. Asked? So what we request 
is that we are able to speak to all students um, because they don't know what they're interested in until they hear it. They don't know what we have to offer. They don't know what IRCs we're giving because in the past we haven't given many or mm -hmm. most of these. They don't know what they don't know. So we've requested to speak to all of our schools. We have had some polite pushback um, saying that um, you know, this is the only amount of time we can give you and it's only for students that are interested in some schools and some schools have said yes you may speak to our students for 45 minutes right we requested an hour with all students in grades uh, who would be entering grades 10 11 and 12 so some schools we haven't heard back yet from um, and some schools one school said only interested students and only 30 minutes and another school said 45 minutes and yes you can speak to all of them so what I'm kind of getting at is I do a lot of help wanted ads for local businesses and you really to get employees you've got to paint a picture. Mm -hmm. You can come down and you can work for 3250 driving a bus for the OSSD, right? A lot of people don't know what the hourly rate was. But you also can tell kids like if you get into child services, you're going to come out with education that you're not going to owe anybody for. We can hook you up with CCB, you're going to get two years of classes. You're going to get paid so much. Another benefit of working for a daycare is that the preschool you work at, you won't have to pay for your kids to go there. It might be a benefit of actually being in preschool. That's a saving of $2,000 a month or $1,000 a month. I mean, it is expensive to send your kids to preschool. Mm -hmm. And so, like, there's a lot, and you get to be there when, it, when they're growing. So I'm just saying, like, uh, if, if you went and talked to my kid right now who's 14, he's like, whatever. <laughs> Right, but how do you like, with, like when I when I, when I talk to him about like if I went to talk to you when you were fourteen, you would have said what happened. Whatever, right? Yeah. So <laughs> here he comes in my next injunction. Do you start back up adult ed for this class? Is someone in their twenties going? Oh my God, life's harder than I thought. Can should we start up an adult ed for educational services that might want to get to preschool and have a better job and do the same two year course and have CCV all lined up? Somewhere in their twenties, early thirties, and be like, "Hey, I suspect that the avenue right now for that is CCB." They're already doing it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But not a lot of people probably might not be able to drive up there unless it's all remote. Maybe it's all remote. I think remote. a fair amount of it is online. It's just a thought. Like, it as how do you in a, in a need? You know. Yeah. Well. Look, I'm just a superintendent right. here. I'm, right. I'm willing. I'm willing to put a budget together that has us having a tuition, uh, the tuition rate. If it was funded on the actual number of students uh, with this year, would be. Uh, I won't even round it up to thirty thousand. I'll tell you, it would be twenty nine nine forty seven. And how does that compare to the other tech centers around? Uh, I I am just brand new into this, but I know it is much higher than where Chittenden County was. Yeah. See, so. I mean, that's that's going to be the problem, and then you're, you're going to have even more pushback from surrounding districts that feed into the program because yeah. they're not going to want. That's more than what they're. Yeah. Yeah, it's, we're on a really slippery tip yeah. scale here. With this is a. Center. This is um, definite, definitely a challenge, and I mean, you know, we. I think we're going to have to we're going to have to look at that. We're going to have to work at encouraging students to come, and we also have a responsibility to make sure. I, I think it's going to be a tough budget year. So, you know, if the numbers got back to where they were two years ago, the one fifty or one sixty, would we be having a budget problem? Uh, if the numbers were back in that range, and would we have to? That's not the range that I heard two or three years ago. Yeah, the numbers like that, that I heard you around just 120, 130. Last year, and then the year before was 158, 160. No, no, no because that's part of the six. That's part of the six semester average, and those that those numbers. Like 117. I'll go through my notes again, but I was under the impression that two years ago when I joined the board, it was around the 160. Mm, no, we haven't seen that. I don't think they've seen okay. it for a long time. Yeah. I don't I don't dare give you an Even exact number, Nathan, but I would certainly give you an exact number tomorrow. Perfect. You got my email? I do. Okay. 
I'm curious, um, because I would imagine other tech centers also probably saw a drop because of COVID. Are they, mm -hmm. are, is the state allowing any kind of, like maybe we'll allow you five years, any pre-COVID in, in looking like at numbers now? Well. It's all going to be no. from here on. No. I okay. know. No. Yeah. Uh, so is there any other tech-based classes like plumbing or anything, if you're going to take away a class that you could bring in to, up, to boost up numbers for another type of class? Well, we have, we, we have classes that right. we would want to draw students into, and we will focus our energy into increasing those classes so that we're not back here next year saying, okay, now it's... I, Nika, the I next smallest class that we'd have to close. So yes, the How answer to your question is yes. How many below eight kids per class right now? Uh, fifty percent. Fifty percent is below eight kids. So do you know what they are? What the programs are? Oh, you went yeah. over that in the last. I, I time, did. Right? I do. It's I mean, like, I can. I'm just curious. Yeah. Because Culinary is hurting. Yes. Okay. So, oh, let's see. Culinary. Is under health careers is under dental, dental education, manufacturing, construction. Uh, yeah, manufacturing construction. is that design engineering, I, construction trades. Yes, no, I think trade. auto is. Has construction mm -hmm. ever been under? You said no. Uh, Boy, that use is one of the more construction. Knowledge. They've been under it's eight been for under. the last couple of years. years. I think they. Yeah. I think they had seven. So two design, years ago. engineering, health careers, yeah. culinary, criminal justice. Oh, you got it. Dental. Criminal justice, criminal justice is also dental. Construction, education. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A pre is doing really well. We had a very large pre tech group this year, which is How's awesome. Diesel. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. One thing you might want to think about adding to that program is HVAC. Yes, that would be a whole other program. For that in the workforce. Yes. More so than diesel vehicles, but that's just one. That would be a whole new program, and yes, that would be great to add. Mm -hmm. so, and requires the state to approve it. Yes, absolutely. which is a process. Which probably means that we'd be taking numbers away from somewhere else. So or I'm, adding? Maybe. I have a question. So, if we if we if we if we say okay, eliminate education services, um, if we wanted to add it back in mm -hmm. a few years, yeah. do we have to go through the whole state <coughs> process again to add it back in again? Not if we suspend it, right? That's what she well, said. Right, but I think you can only suspend for a year. Oh. And so, yes, I believe that I did ask that question, and that you would need to show, my understanding is that you need to show that there's the interest. And as with anything, with opening any new program, like you would have to be able to survey kids and show that there's really kids that are really gonna wanna do this. Um, but that's important, no matter what, if you suspended it or, or, or decided closed you it wanted for to now. open it. For yeah, them. or if you okay. wanted to open a plumbing program or an HVAC program, like you definitely want to make sure that you have the kids that are interested in that to, you know, before you open the program. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So one oh, other sorry, question: mm -hmm. dental assisting. We got a bit. We got a. If I remember too, with dental assisting, I remember at one of these meetings you said this. We're going to have to pay back the state? Yes. So, so what happened with that? Are, are we I have a potential solution that's kind of worked into okay. the rest here. But okay. um, I will answer that right now. So one potential thought is the combination of dental and health careers. So it's all health careers because dental assisting is a health career. So combining so that there's units of dental assisting and we use all that beautiful uh, materials that we have um, for that program. So you would get your LNA and potentially a dental assisting certification if that's the route you wanted to go. 
depending on interest. So we could either keep all of those beautiful supplies and introduce them into health careers, or we could um, see who else who's doing a program like that needs them. But there are options. But I would, right now, think it would be a good idea to see what the interest is for next year and combine it with health careers, potentially, to see if there are people who might want to rejuvenate that. If you combine it with health careers, and you separate it if we got an abundance of kids three years down the road again? Yes. So you maybe would have to get recertified or repassed? I don't think so. I would obviously have to double check, but I don't think so. That might be a good compromise. Mm -hmm. I think so. And they naturally are combined often. Um, we, like they're doing biology together. And they, the teachers work together. We have an LNA and a doctor. And so the two, uh, not an LNA, a nurse and a doctor. And so they combine and work together often. And when they're doing um, first aid certification or they're doing um, lessons on uh, cleaning, medical grade cleaning and cleaning supplies. They do those things together mm -hmm. a lot of times because they apply to all kinds of medical fields. So it is a natural fit um, and they've just kind of naturally worked it out and the, the students kind of intermingle and interchange in each other's programs. So it's a really natural thing that's happening already. Yeah. And have you let so so what happens with that with the whole money part of it with the state so if we combine it yeah or or the other would would be if we found another one then the state would not say okay you need to pay us for this equipment i a lot think of that's the pretty much where we're at so go ahead a lot of the grant money was used to develop the curriculum in the program and to pay for the instructor um, and the money that was invested in equipment, actually at the time the director chose to buy used equipment. Mm -hmm. And so subsequently when we had surplus funds, we bought new equipment with tuition dollars because the old equipment was not preparing students to work in the industry because it was antiquated. So all the equipment that's currently in the outfit, the majority, has been purchased with tuition dollars and we don't owe it back to the state. So after talking through this with Ruth Jerky, she's like, you're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should. Well, that, yep. that's great. So yep. that, that sounds good. So even if we stopped that program mm -hmm. and we didn't combine it with health careers, we would have that equipment on hold or we could mm -hmm. sell it maybe to mm -hmm. a different program right. Right. if we wanted to. Yes. So it's not, a, we're not, we're not being held for that. No. Okay. Which is, that's, yeah. That's yes. good to know. Yes. Okay. I remember that Yay. conversation. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay. So, again, I'll go back to this is the recommendation that I'm bringing forward because I think, like, mm -hmm. like Michael said, that we just really need to put our energy into the programs that we have, for one, that are our thriving and close to thriving. So programs that have five kids or six kids, they're very close to getting to the mm -hmm. number seven. So eight is like the golden number. You want eight or higher. But if you have seven, then you can still receive funding. But they just want you to keep work on your enrollment. So if we have five, we only need two more to get to a place where we can apply for funding for that program. So. Um, there are several programs that are under eight that are also really close to that. So if we really put our energy into that, I think that we can increase and expand what we already have, which is a lot of great programs. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> You're good. And then I have sorry, some really good sorry. news I want to share. Culinary, when I think about culinary, <laughs> you can come off the street with a high school diploma and get a job in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wonder, and I know we've got all that equipment and we have that kitchen, um, but again, if they, our numbers are not super high. I think we need to give that one a chance. Okay. Um, and aren't we losing a, a, we're losing a instructor? Yes, and we're gaining one. Okay, so you've so, already hired. And, okay. Sorry. I'm just... I don't... 
We have a lot of confidence in the new hire. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know, I didn't know what that meant. Yes, no, I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I think I think we give it some time. I think it's going to be really good. Okay. Um, Can you say so. who the new hire is? Did you sign her contract? Yes. Oh, public information. Yes. Um, it is Shelby Bowen. <laughs> I think she's going to do a really great job. Um, okay, so I want to share some really exciting um, news. So last year, uh, well, every year, you t we take the work keys. It's like the SATs for tech centers. So we take them in the fall and we take them in the spring. And one of um, <laughs> our areas of need was to increase our work key scores. Um, and I am really excited to say that we have, and I want to share that information. So, um, just a couple of highlights on that work keys highlights one. So we had a 25% jump in proficiency in returning second year students. So from last fall to this fall, 25% more are now proficient. And based on this trend, uh, we're projecting a 50% gain in work, pre work keys proficiency for second year students next year. Currently, 34% of all students have mastered the work keys test, which is a Vermont state measurement for college and career readiness. And by the end of the year, if we consistently continue with those gains, 44% of our students will have mastered the work keys test. And if you go to the next page, the next two pages, you'll see the graphic literacy fall 2023 and the graphic literacy fall 2024. And so in fall 2023, 45% of students were proficient. And proficient means a score of five, six, or seven. Then a year later, fall 2024, 69% of our students are proficient. If you look at workplace documents on the next page, last year we were 29% proficient in workplace documents, and now we are 51.5% proficient. Our students have worked incredibly hard. We have motivated them. We have um, increased, well, up until this point, and I'll explain more, we have doubled the time that students spend in math and ELA um, and really spent a lot of time helping them gain the skills to, to take these tests in a, in a way that's going to benefit them and shows what they really know. And instead of students clicking through the test because they don't think it matters or because they don't know how to answer the question. They've learned skills to answer the questions, to understand the material so that they can use this in the workplace, um, which is what this test is designed to do, is, is to show their competency in any given workplace. And so we're really proud of our increase in proficiency. So I wanted to share that. So I, I just have a, sorry. No, you're questions. good. Um, so we're at, we could get up to 44%. Yeah. Um, are we looking at all students? Every single student? Not pre text. The test? No, not 10th grade. Okay. So this is 11th so these and 12th are grade. Kids with IEPs, kids with yeah. uh, other challenges. We're 43% special education and that includes everybody except 10th grade is because 10th graders don't take the test. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to, to, cause some people will look at this and say, wow, you can't even get 50% of your students to pass this test. The important thing is still get growth. Right. So much growth. Yes, that's important. But <laughs> I can tell you people out in the public, right. there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a contingency of them, not everyone, but there are some who would look at that and say, wow. But I think if we make sure that folks know, these are, these are not just, you know, these are some students that have learning challenges. Because a lot of times when we look at the other testing, we, we pull different groups out and you can. This is everyone. This is everybody. Yes. We're not, we're not, uh, and everybody is taking the test. Correct. 
So I think that's yes. just important to point out to yes. those who might to look at it and go, I'm curious, you're from a different board, what's so, your takeaway? Are well, you no, like, I mean, yeah, the, the, the proficiency charts are discouraging to look at, in, in, uh, I think, in all schools. <laughs> right, um, right, even the cognitive. <coughs> yeah, just the way yeah. It's, it's just the way it's Presented, this is from my uh, regarding it's a lot of reds and yellows. Yes. Uh, in everything, you know, even early education. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like she said, the, the gains of what you look for. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, thank you. Yes, the gains. So and another important thing to to know is that the students come to us from other sending schools. Like it's not like they they didn't all come through. RTCC for their whole career. They came here and they might be here for a month and a half and take this test. So it is, it's, a, it's generally like where students are at. Mm -hmm. But I think that the important part is that the growth. And if we continue what we're doing, I think that we're going to see more and more growth. And so that was the goal from last year is to increase our work key scores and that happened. So I'm really, 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 we're really proud of the kids. Okay. Well, sometimes you need yeah. to look like State graph that you can compare mm -hmm. to, to see how you're doing against other schools. Mm -hmm. you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's another great way to look at it. Absolutely. Uh, Are other yes. tech centers doing this as well? Yes, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, okay, and so, oh goodness, uh, we have six minutes. Yep. And sorry. so, no, no, don't be sorry, you're fine. Um, the school board meeting next week, though, right? Yes. There's not a meeting yes. right behind us. There is a meeting. There is a right committee meeting. Behind meeting. Behind the school board. School board committee. So, um, what I'm going to do, I think, is scoot through. Um, we are working on a change to our schedule so that we are compliant with the amount of minutes that the state says students need to spend in their program. So, and you can read that yourself, but you'll see quarter one, what we're moving to, and our solution. But I do want to do um, just two, well, I really did want to discuss three things, but we don't have time. I want to let everybody know that we're having a college fair on December 17th. Um, from 9 to 11 a.m. at the school and so um, we're inviting colleges that have programs that pertain to the programs we offer and having them line the halls and having a college fair um, later in the year we'll be having a career fair in the spring um, but I want to let you guys know about that and uh, Nancy when she was here she had mentioned the winter market and so we're going to be doing the winter market again on December 5th from 10 to 2 and um, all of the programs are making items to sell and we have some really amazing things and one really amazing thing that's coming out of this is these beautiful lamps in the shape of rockets that are made by the electrical students and they're absolutely gorgeous so I want to tell you about that. Um, I do need to to bounce back to um, the two program closures. Um, do I have your support to close those two programs at this point? I'd rather see them merge or suspended. Okay, merge, merge could be. The, the dental and the mm -hmm. health yes. careers, mm -hmm. I think, is a yes. merger, and I'd rather not cancel the early ed of like the suspended, and then if we don't have anything, cancel it next year. So Nika, I'd like to see you go ahead and cancel both of them because I'd like to see you spend the energy on getting the rest of the programs to be sustainable. I don't want you spreading out the energy and then having to close other programs because we didn't concentrate that energy. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I guess Put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess suspension, if it doesn't require a lot of energy, probably a better way to go if you can spend it for a year and see if we can get revamp it and come back stronger but uh, yeah it's, but, you know, I'd say it's, I, I, my option would be to suspend it for a year or the mer in the merger the, the dental into healthcare it sounds good too yeah. well it sounds like that's that will happen anyway I think it's gonna happen naturally because if we have students that are interested in dental we're gonna say please Please join our health careers program where you can also so you're choose not dental really as a path. Ask, you're just canceling it as a standalone. As an, yes, as okay. an individual program. So, so that merger is going to happen anyway, it sounds like? As long as students have interest. But if I have zero students, 
then we're going then to FDA. stick with the LNA. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that's so clear. So do you need, so are you, so if we... <laughs> or in the event that, that I don't have, you know, let's say the staffing becomes an issue and I no longer have staffing for the dental situation, that would be like an out of yeah. yeah. So so we need to agree to eliminate that one. Or well do you, do you need we, a motion on this? No, no it's just it's a not a voting board it's recommendation. A okay. Orange Southwest School District Board will decide the final. They'll either accept um, our recommendation or they'll okay. right. object. I think what Nika needs yeah. is this board's recommendation for the state. Yes. And what I'm going to need if we do anything, I, I mean, we can mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. suspend. I think it's a little, mm -hmm. it might be a little disingenuous to suspend and say we're working really hard on this right. if we're working really hard on others, but mm -hmm. that's well, I okay. I think it's working hard. I mean, if you suspend it and you get educate information on how to restructure it, is that going to be a lot of energy? Well, I would say we did work on trying to restructure this well, for this year. And what's the teacher currently doing? She has nobody in her class. Why? Why? I mean, we're paying her salary. That's right. You ask her to do, to 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 do that work during this year. What we, is she? What else is she doing? Yeah, she wants to keep we, her job. Make sure yeah. She's good at that. I mean, <laughs> come on. So it's been we a two did. Year, that's been a, that was the last yeah. year thing and we the did this that. year thing. We've yeah. been. Yep. I that support, happened. <laughs> I support your decision in the closure. We did come up with a number of um, creative ways that we felt like could really attract students, but there are these very specific guidelines too that they have to follow on to regarding the AOE, and our, some of our out-of-the-box ideas didn't fall into those categories. As an example, um, outdoor education being part of the education program. And come and working with, uh, I think it's Johnson State has a outdoor education bachelor's degree, um, and kind of being like a feeder program for them to help get students in. But outdoor education is not part of the framework that education services leads into. Were you unable to get this teacher to work on? on a plan to try and reinvigorate early childhood education? They, they did try. They did try. They did. Okay, so it's not... They did. Hmm. They care very much and they tried. Uh, I, get, I guess I'd have to, and I really hate to, but like the dental, I think is actually a student out of our district. But yeah, I'd have to say cancel that. And the education services, but nobody's interested in signing up. Not at this time, but if we had students and they were like, I just want to be a teacher, this is all I want to do. If I had six, seven kids interested, I could. That, well, that's where I'm, I could, I'm to leaning toward pause. Yeah. Pause. I don't mind canceling Let's the pause. dental. Cancel the dental and pause. We're, the... We're, we, that would alleviate the budget issue, correct? What's that? If we paused, we don't need to pay for a teacher. She won't sure. be here. Next she year. won't be here. Yeah, no, that's true. And in the meantime, I can tell you, being on a board that's looking for early childhood educators, <coughs> we're going to be beating the bushes Great. because it is a big concern. And so maybe students will will kind of hear. <laughs> I don't know. Um, or maybe not, and if we don't have any interest coming into the next year, then then I'm okay with it. But I but I think if we can, I that's where I would fall because it's not going to hurt us to say. I just have to look and make sure pause. that that's true. That there's no negative repercussion. I don't. Okay. Think. Yeah. I don't know yeah, that, that seems, part. Yeah. I would uh, have that, to. I, I don't sure. know, but it's worth a call to Ruth, and if it's not any skin off our teeth. To, Pause it. Let's pause it. See if when we open up and are like, hey, we need people, and people see what we're paying, even though it's not quite as much as a district can pay, but if, you know, for some families, that's, or some people, that's 
-hmm. You know, they, they like the work and they yeah. may not have realized that it's going to pay more. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that would be my recommendation. All right. Um, so we're out of time. So I guess it's a consensus okay. between us three that is cancel with that goal and pause and the, pause pause the <coughs> other one. Unless you find out that you can't do, you've got to, I don't know, unless it's going to like really tax you. I don't know. I'd have to. Being able to do what? Yeah, there's some kind of plan. negative repercussions. Of yeah, yeah. But if it's. If not, let's yeah. let's see if what happens in the next yeah. year or so. Well, thank you. So what I'll, what I'll do, so I hear all of you, and what I would do then is we'd have to get some more information and make the best decision. Yeah. But I definitely, for sure, hear your concerns for sure. And I know we're out of time, and I don't want to take up too much time, but it always seems that there's never enough time. I cannot emphasize enough the reputation of our TCC in this community is horrible. I don't know why they come to me because I'm on the board and they don't go through the proper chains. And it's not just the letter I sent. It's parents, it's students, yep. it's former employees, it's current employees. I don't know why they're afraid to go through the proper channels. But the numbers of why RTCC is low might not just be because of the decline of population. Very big concerns. Lots so, of Nathan, I would say that there's lots of conjecture there, and I am happy to, as you know, I gave you my telephone number, my extension, you have my email. Absolutely. There is a complaint policy to be followed at the Orange Southwest School District, and I would encourage people to follow that. There's been two different superintendents that have operated under that complaint policy with people that you must be talking about. I can tell you that I personally am in the tech center at least once a week. I think that, I think I can say that as, I can't say that about all the buildings, but the tech center, right. I think I've been there. Uh, I reach out to folks, so I would encourage you to continue to encourage them to follow the proper, the proper J, because right. that is the proper place to rectify concerns that people have. What I'm saying is it's a real concern to me that they don't feel comfortable using that. Now, whether that's a P, well, we can sit there and do this, but numbers are declining. Well, can Nathan, you hear talking? Nathan my, my take on this is we can say that there's a, there's a chain of command and there's a complaint policy to follow, and then we should follow it. So if you think I'm not doing something that I should be doing, this isn't an then, attack. This well, is but an wait, attack. It, it kind of is because you're sitting there saying I feel. So no, what no, I no. I don't you, feel nothing. Okay. This is information coming to me from people in the community. Yes. Now, I'm not blaming anybody here. What okay. my concern is is they don't feel comfortable. They don't feel comfortable going through the chain of command. And that's a real concern because RTCC, and like every other school, will survive by the community feeling comfortable Great. going through the chain of commands and doing that. I can see, like I said, there's never enough time to have this conversation. There's people that are afraid of losing their jobs. There's people afraid of backlash from the community itself. Nathan, I'm happy to have this conversation Absolutely, with you. You have my telephone number, my email. To the board is all I'm doing. And I would just look at it internally, think about PR-wise, whether it's more involvement, being more transparent about what's going on. I'm just saying it would help the image of the tech center. Sure. Not just in Randolph, but in the surrounding communities that use it as well. Okay, point of order. This was not on the agenda, and we've overdone our time. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you for coming, and have a good night.